with this uh, political and historical background let's look at the verdict uh, per se which was delivered on 30th of september uh, this is a question that was asked uh, in indian media uh, quite a number of times during the debates immediately after the verdict uh, verdict mm-hmm. was delivered uh, the question is very simple uh, are you disappointed by this verdict and why if you are well no i mean the, the, the purpose of the verdict is to to settle the issue to put a stop to the whole controversy and if everybody abides by the verdict i, I think that the, the verdict provides for that uh of course uh, it's a bit strange that the judges first say well historically of course the site has a hindu history is a hindu sacred site and then to say well we'll divide it two of the hindu litigants get each one third and the the sunni waqf board get another third um well i i mean as a historian i don't want to pronounce on the rights and wrongs of of that verdict uh, juridically but it leaves scope for an amicable settlement especially because the judges have including uh, the the muslim judge there were three judges two hindus one muslim all three agreed that at any rate the the central site the actual contentious site uh, should be left to the hindus now they say a third but that means a third of the plot presently controlled and owned by the government which is pretty large which is a lot more than the precise contentious site so in my opinion it's okay to leave one third of that to the muslims somewhere and then it is up to them to decide if they want to uh insist on building another mosque there but at any rate not at the contentious site so i i think in in that in that respect the judgment is fair enough it uh, doesn't humiliate the muslim litigants uh it gives them something too uh so in a political sense i think it's a good judgment now as a historian of course i find it slightly funny that uh they justify their their judgment with uh a few strange assumptions um uh i think two of the judges uh not all of them have first of all said uh it is the birthplace of rama now i am not sure if you can say that it is very difficult to prove that something some place is the birthplace of anyone even your own birthplace if you say i was born in a hospital in mumbai and that hospital still exists and they have very good records see that proves it then the jnu historians will say ah but you see maybe some hindu fundamentalist doctor has mislaid the papers and try to pretend that somebody else was born there instead of you or something you see they will find some conspiracy and explain away the evidence now this is all the more true when you speak of somebody born thousands of years ago um so that i don't know if they they needed to go into that at all uh the main point is that it has been accepted as the birthplace of rama by hindus uh for hundreds of years at any rate since well before the controversy started there's enough testimony of that um you see you don't need to believe in rama in order to accept the fact that uh first of all rama is held sacred by a large community of people and that secondly they also believe that he was born at that site and that that birth was particularly important because to them rama is the incarnation uh of vishnu so the birth the, the coming down of vishnu into the human world is a particularly important aspect of um rama's role and and religious significance um so that in itself should be reason enough to respect it in fact that counts for muslims that counts for secularists you see i i have compared it once with the site in france of lourdes which is uh, where the virgin mary is supposed to have appeared to a little girl in i think 1858 now france is a militantly secular state 
and uh, most French officials don't believe in this apparition. Nevertheless, because there is an important community of people who do believe in it, the French government protects the site, you see, makes all kinds of arrangements for the uh, pilgrims. So, you see, the fact that there are human beings who believe this, mean that means that out of respect for those human beings, you should, you know, be lenient with traditions even if you don't believe in them. And you see, I think that is uh, secularism in the good sense of the term, that, you know, you arrange for different religions to coexist without conflict. Now, in this case, uh, Ayodhya is a sacred site for Hindus, not for Muslims, not for anybody else, to some extent for Buddhists, because Buddhists, in fact, believe that Rama was also an earlier incarnation of the Buddha, and that is even before Hindus started saying that Rama and Buddha were incarnations of Vishnu. This is really in the, in the oldest Buddhist text, in the, in the Jatakas, that you find this. Um, and, of course, no Hindu objects to Buddhists coming on pilgrimage to this site. Uh, but at any rate, you see, the question of whether Rama was born there, while interesting, um, should, in my opinion, not form part of the justification of the uh, practical arrangement that the judges have, have imposed. Um, secondly, they do acknowledge, at any rate, the majority opinion of the court is that, indeed, the mosque was built in forcible replacement of a temple. Uh, so far, so good. You see, that, at any rate, at long last, um, acknowledges the existing body of evidence. In fact, the third uh, uh, judge, uh, uh, Just Justice Khan, Mm -hmm. uh, though does not acknowledge <coughs> uh, that a mo uh, the temple was demolished, uh, but he does record or acknowledge mm -hmm. the fact that uh, a pre-existing Hindu temple which was in ruins yes. uh, was replaced or was built upon uh, using probably the material from mm -hmm. that ruins. Uh, and that uh, is also another interesting point because I was reading that uh, and please validate this, that in, in, in case of Hindus, there are many, many ruined buildings, uh, which were temples, ruined temples, uh, uh, which uh, are in ruins because there are no people to fund it and support it and maintain it, mm -hmm. but people still worship there, though they are right. uh, in, in bad condition, but people still go and worship the, uh, the deity presiding there. So even yes. if the building was... At any rate, the mosque was built at a site where Hindus were worshipping. Therefore, it was at any rate misplaced. You see, we'll come to the point of the demolished temple, but even without a temple at the site, the site itself was sacred to the Hindus. Therefore, the imposition of the mosque on a Hindu sacred site is an act of aggression, is an act of disrespect. Uh, as I said, you see, Hindus kept on worshipping the, worshiping there even when there was a mosque standing. Um, so it was the site itself that was important. Yeah. A temple, of course, if it's you know demolished, it can be rebuilt somewhere else. But in this case, it is the site itself that mattered. Now, of course, skeptical people, non-religious people may find all this a bit overdone. You see, why worry about this particular site? But, you know, if we're going to respect religions, then we should respect that convention that Rama is um, preferentially worshipped at that particular site. Another point that I found strange in the, um, in the judgment is that the judges agreed, and in fact they uh, agreed not just amongst each other, but with one of the Hindu litigants, that the demolition of a temple is an un-Islamic act, and that a mosque built in such conditions is therefore not really a mosque. Well, that is very strange. Uh, of course, you see, Islam has quite a history of replacing non-Muslim religious buildings with mosques. Yeah, for example, the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, which was a cathedral of the Greek Orthodox, the Mesquita, the famous uh, mosque in Cordoba, that is now again used as a church, but that has been built in forcible replacement of a Catholic cathedral. Uh, likewise, the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus, was originally a Christian church, and you can still see parts of it in the building. So this is a very common Islamic tradition. And so to say that it is an un-Islamic act, 
to demolish somebody else's place of worship is simply not true. But I understand that in the Indian context, in order not to offend Muslim and secularist sensibilities, perhaps you see that that little white lie, you know, was the lesser evil. So I, I don't want to fuss too much about that.